Welcome to Contemporary Retirement. Contemporary Retirement is a public interest program focused on the retirement community. Every program has segments on legal, financial, and health issues affecting the retirement community. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a major grant from the Family Heritage Trust Company. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored by Family Heritage Trust Company. The Family Heritage Trust Company is an independent bank chartered trust company established by local professionals to provide fiduciary services including fee-based investment advice, trust services, retirement planning, and tax planning. The Family Heritage Trust Company is committed to client service in our communities. For more information, call the Family Heritage Trust Company at 301-631-5900. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a grant from R. Thomas Murphy & Associates, P.C. R. Thomas Murphy & Associates is one of Franklin County's leading law firms, emphasizing estate, trust, elder law, and medical assistance planning. Welcome to the Is It Legal feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various legal issues which are of importance to the retirement community. With me today is Tom Murphy from the R. Thomas Murphy Law Firm with offices in Waynesboro, Chambersburg, and McConnellsburg. Welcome to the show, Tom. Good morning, Mike. Tom, we've been talking the last several weeks about powers of attorney and the fact that in many instances we want a husband and a wife, if there's a spousal case, each other together with preferably two of the children so that if one parent becomes incapacitated, we still have two powers of attorney and even if the child is, has, an, has their own incapacity issues, I still have yet another one who can serve in that role. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes when we're dealing with an 80 to 85 year old parent, we have to assume it's the last document they're ever going to be able to sign. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. And so you want to have that document stacked with quality people and plenty of backup, irregardless of geography and, and anything like that. And we classically see lawyers so focused on the possibility that they won't get along that they do this sequential or only name one when in reality there's no need to do that because most families, if they have a history of getting along, they will continue to get along. If they don't have a history of getting along, well, then obviously you don't put multiple people on there. Right. This is one of the most intuitive documents you'll do. I mean, your gut usually tells you who the people in your life are who are trustworthy and honest and are get along and play well. So those are the folks you need to be naming. I basically tell a person if a child was fundamentally honest at 8, 18, and 28, I guarantee you they're fundamentally honest at 48. No liar doubt. and <laughs> cheat at 8, 18, and 28, I guarantee you they're a liar and cheat at 48. Yeah, absolutely. The only thing that will change that is substance abuse, gambling addiction, or perhaps overbearing spouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those are all things we discuss, and that's, that's part of making a good decision and, and how and who you put on the document. And sometimes, you know, we have people that don't have children. Well, oftentimes people who don't have children have a brother or sister, but the problem is they're in the same generation as them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we're looking at a niece or a nephew or somebody else who they have a great deal of confidence in. Right. But it does require you pay attention because oftentimes these people are more transitory in your life than people who are your children. That's a good point. And so once you've ex extended through all of those choices, then we have to get into the more you know, rigid choices, the, the trust company, the, you know, the bank, or in some cases ourselves. Last resort. <laughs> <laughs> but we do it. And yeah. so it's, a, it's an honor, but it is a challenge. It's not as perfect as perhaps a son or daughter, or whoever, who's always been trustworthy and honest. So as we look through this, we're inventorying relationships. We're mm -hmm. not going to jam a person who has a history of substance abuse or financial no. irresponsibility into a position that they have no business serving in. Yeah, and many people think that this is you know, some sort of inheritance or we got to keep it fair and equal. And this is not about that. It's about who's your best employee or employees and who's going to do well for you. And one of the beauties of the way our modern financial services operations works, it used to be that if you had a child living in California or Florida or something, that automatically meant they had to be excluded mm -hmm. because the transact business with the bank 20 years ago required that somebody be physically present. That requirement today? Nope, not at all. A lot of people do their online banking and can monitor accounts and, and pay bills you know, from a thousand miles away. And then oftentimes you did mention the trust company is that the trust company does do bill paying. So the reality is, is they could use the Family Heritage Trust Company with them still overviewing and supervising it, but not even mechanically having to do it. Exactly. They're, they're there to play a role. And so they do an excellent job in a neutral way to make sure that your, your finances are in order. No one's dipping into the funds. But when it comes to doing more exotic nursing home Medicaid planning, it's sometimes challenging. 
you know, we challenge people that at least every five years, and if a person is in fact having, you know, uh, getting older and perhaps being at risk, maybe even every three years, mm -hmm. to have those documents looked at again, because the failure to have appropriate documents or reflect changes that might have occurred is going to add significant time and potentially significant expense on the failure to keep them updated. That's an excellent point. It's it's easy to do. You, you folks regularly go to the doctor for a checkup, and I look at it the same way. And if the documents are fine, you, you leave them alone. If they're not, you tweak them, re-sign, and go forward. And oftentimes people are surprised that we don't change every document. Many times wills are just fine and we right. leave them alone. So everybody thinks it's the most important document. But in reality, in most cases, the most important document by far is that power of attorney and making sure it's up to date to the latest statutory format. Yep, and hopefully after listening to us week after week explain that, people understand that. <laughs> well, I find that they don't. You know, we, you know, we keep saying pre-2010, even if it's mine needs to be redone, it's not a question of you know, incompetence. The law changed, right. and the reality is pre-2010 power of attorney, if the person has capacity, needs to be updated, period. Right. And if, even if there isn't a law change, you know, there's incremental changes you need to take in, into account, and, and that's part of the process. And part of what we also look at is the Pennsylvania and Maryland powers of attorney 20 years ago crossed state lines very easily. Today, both states have their own format, mm -hmm. and if I have a person that lives in Maryland but has a cabin in Pennsylvania, we better have a Pennsylvania power of attorney as well. It's a good point. It's like, you know, someone's coming into the office, and it's a French office, but the, someone's speaking Spanish. It's just it doesn't mesh well, so you need both documents. We have the same problem with the snowbirds. Yep, absolutely. You need those papers. Tom, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on the program. You're welcome. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Few things in life are as important as family. Leave your insurance worries to us. Write Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. Call Ed Lowe to help put your mind at ease. Welcome to a special guest feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various issues which are of importance to the retirement community. With me today is Jason Malott, Register of Wills, Washington County, Maryland. Welcome to the show, Jason. Good morning. Thank, thanks for having me, Mike. Yeah, Jason, we always have a lot of fun when we have you on the program because we're always talking about the incredible difficulty in addressing urban myths out there that people believe about the probate system. Right. First of all, as I say somewhat tongue-in-cheek, the state of Maryland is collecting virtually no taxes in the probate system, so how many resources do they want to devote to a process they're not making any money? That's right. Uh, we have so many people that think the probate process is going to be difficult, and they're very surprised uh, when we walk them through it that how easy it really is in Maryland. And as you say, there's no reason to put up barriers for folks. Because all they do is put up barriers, it costs them more money to operate the thing, and so it's right. a very smooth, easy process. That's right, and we do as much as we can to facilitate folks through the, through the uh, process and make it as, as easy as, as we possibly can. The irony of it is, is some of the difficulties in terms of the probate process really have nothing to do with probate. So, for instance, you know, we'll have people say, well, I don't want to get my property appraised, when, and it may not be necessary for probate purposes, but if you have a property that's worth a whole heck of a lot more than the tax assessment, you've made a terrible mistake, not from a probate perspective, but from a tax perspective, in not getting it appraised. That's for sure, and we always advise folks to talk to a tax professional or an attorney to make sure 
that they're not going to be putting themselves in a position that is going to be not beneficial to them and the that, estate. That's right, because for tax purposes, you know, the date of death valuation in many instances gets you a new cost basis. That's the measure of gain. So you have people thinking they're gaming the system by getting it through cheap, and in fact, they just imposed a tax bill on themselves when they sell the property. That, that's exactly right, and that's, that's because people don't take the time to learn what they should prior to making these plans, and that's my best advice to any folks any folks um, doing a, an estate plan is to talk to someone, uh, let them know what you have and what they're going to be able to facilitate for you to make the tax burden less, to make the probate process easier, and it, it just is good, solid, uh, good thing to do. And when you said taxes there, in almost all instances, we were not referring to probate taxes. We were not referring to inheritance taxes. We're referring to income taxes, which has absolutely nothing to do with probate. That's exactly right. And there's so few inheritance taxes. Folks don't realize that. Maryland is... All right. Husband and wife. No tax. Parents to children. No tax. Parents to grandchildren. No tax. Brothers and sisters. Zero. Uh, was that zero? Zero. No tax. Uh, it's, you know, yeah, Pennsylvania viewers, there is some. But That's in right. Maryland, West Virginia, and Virginia viewers, there's, there's essentially none in this traditional family relationships. So being sold these trusts on the premise that it's going to save taxes is in basically meaningless in those three states. This is true. And sometimes trusts will do the opposite of what you might think they're doing and may cost you more uh, than what the probate process might have, have done, might do for you. Yeah, and we, we struggle with that all the time. And of course, you don't deal with this, but from you know, long-term care, nursing home perspective, these trusts are a real problem. And so what they're trying to save is virtually nothing but creating an alternative problem for themselves. Right, they can create a real mess. You know, oftentimes we'll say, yeah, but probate takes a long time. You know, and you and I always say tongue in cheek, if we have an estate that's been open for three years, it is almost always driven by one purpose, the family has failed to sell the dang house. That's right. And sometimes it's it's not necessarily the market. It's that they don't want to let go of the family home. They think it's worth more than what they're being offered for it. And I would tell you, in most of those cases, the family winds up or the estate winds up spending a lot more money than they would have if they'd have sold that home in the beginning. Well, and the other thing, though, is, is even if it had been in a trust, they still didn't sell the dang house. That's right. So, you know, it would not have sped up the process. You know, it's really most of the time when you have an estate that's been open a long time, it's the people involved that are creating the problem. They could have just as equally created that problem, whether it was in a trust or through the estate. That's exactly right. The, the, the ones that are without a will or that has family conflict, that's the ones that are going to last the three and four years that we were talking about. And one of the interesting things in conflict is when I have small level conflicts, I always want to go through probate. How long does it take to get in front of the orphan's court? Oh, if you schedule today, within six weeks. And do you have to have a lawyer? Not necessarily, no. But if you're in a fight in a trust, it's in the circuit court. There's going to be lawyers and the costs are going to be enormous. That's exactly right. And it's going to be a long time. Jason, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on our program. Thanks, Mike. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Tranquility at Fredericktown Assisted Living and Memory Care provides a warm, home-like atmosphere that promotes daily life enrichment. At Tranquility, our medical director is a geriatric physician. Our professionals support and understand the various stages associated with Alzheimer's and dementia. We have on-site physical, occupational, and speech therapists, as well as around-the-clock licensed nurses. For more information, give Tranquility at Fredericktown a call today, because everyone deserves great care. Let us do the caregiving so you and your loved one can embrace life again. Come on, Dad, let's go! We're gonna be late! Hurry! Just one more bid on HurleyAuctions.com! If you haven't visited HurleyAuctions.com, you don't know what you're missing. Whether you're buying or selling, antique cars, tractors, boats, or real estate, you can do it all at HurleyAuctions.com. Get to know Dr. Carrie Hesley at Diagnostic Imaging Services. What I find most rewarding is caring for women through our Women's Imaging Center. We have a caring staff that will ease patients through an ultrasound, bone densitometry, breast biopsy, or mammogram. Our health team is sensitive to emotions involved in women's imaging and understands that every woman is at risk for breast cancer. Providing the community with a center that is so dedicated to breast health and the imaging needs of women is something special. DIS Women's Imaging Center, providing women with progressive care. 
Welcome to Contemporary Health Scene. Contemporary Health Scene focuses on the health issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Gabrielle Henry, Executive Director, Greenfield Assisted Living. Welcome to the show, Gabby. Good morning, Mr. Day. You know, we talk about assisted living, and there's an automatic knee jerk that assisted living involves loss of control of your life. Yes, that is the uh, kind of the deception that goes with an assisted living. Um, what we try to do at Greenfield is bring back that quality of life to our individual residents. And oftentimes, though, when you look at people, because your institution focuses on dementia, is that you not only have to focus on quality of life, but you also have to focus on safety. Yes, safety is our number one priority. Um, safety is also the main concern where we have families of our residents, um, what tailors them to come into an assistant living community. Um, and our assistant living community is all locked down. So each wing's locked down and the front door's locked down. So that way our um, residents have the free will to roam around the area. And it's a double lockdown. Yes, a so double even lockdown. So I can't escape. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but one of the things I like about your facility is it's the three pods. Explain to us what the purpose of having three pods is. Yes, so since we specialize in memory care, um, whether you're diagnosed with some form of dementia or Alzheimer's, um, the service levels um, increase as the, as the um, disease progresses. Um, we separate our um, individuals in communities, three different communities, depending upon their services, um, where, what we're providing um, service-wise with their activities of daily living, um, and how they are cognitively. Um, just because they would may maybe require a little bit more help, physical assistance with their activities of daily living, um, but they're able to hold a conversation, we do house them with others who are in the same mindset as they are. Because what we find at the end of the day, socialization is the number one driver of satisfaction. If a person is comfortable having people interact with, they tend to be more content. Whereas if you have an environment in which they feel isolated, almost always a problem. Yes, socialization is a key factor in helping our dementia residents, um, not only involved in group activities, but one-on-one -on -one activities with maybe a staff member of ours. Um, but yes, yeah, socialization to keep the mind um, going throughout the day. Um, because if you don't use it, you lose it. All right, we're going to bring up some pictures here, and, and part of it is is that it's keeping people engaged, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes you have to keep them engaged at the level that they are able yes. to participate. Yes, so our activities actually vary. Um, so in the earlier stages, we have a lot of group activities, bingo, word puzzles, word games, um, and then um, in the later stages, it's more sensory-based activities, um, really focusing on their sensory, um, maybe some massage therapy, music therapy, um, and then here you can see this picture. Um, every Friday we have um, a pre-K class come in from a different school of Washington County um, every Friday at 1 um, and engage in activity, usually a simple craft with our residents. And of course, you know, they, they're, just because they're older doesn't mean they don't enjoy having children and the equivalent of grandchildren around, even if it's not their own. Yes, um, intergenerational activities are a huge hit here at Greenfield. I mean, they really get involved and enjoy um, seeing a fresh face, seeing a different um, perspective on life, and these kids really um, have done an amazing job in bringing that personality out in our individuals. And one of the things that I like about your facility is, is it's not I'm stuck in the dementia unit. It's your people don't work there unless they're willing to work with dementia patients. Yes, every staff member is trained, um, dementia and Alzheimer's trained, um, and they know what they're getting themselves into. We also do a rotating staff too, so it kind of gives a break where, um, yes, in the earlier stages the care is not as much there, it's more supervising and queuing. Um, so we do a rotating staff so they all get a break and they know that which floor or which unit they're on, what type of um, assistance those individuals need. And I'm a big fan of the three-pod environment because it then means that a person who is high-functioning is basically going to be with high-functioning people. They're not going to be in a group environment in which they're staring at people who are clearly not f performing at the same level as themselves. Yes, that is correct. And that also preserves their dignity. Someone who's in a different stage should not be with someone who clearly can do more for themselves or someone who can do more for themselves shouldn't be watching someone who's in the later stages and seeing maybe that may be their future down the road. And part of it is, too, is you've designed that facility so that they can go outside and they don't feel like they're locked in. And the facility itself has an openness that doesn't give a sense that they're locked in. Yes, so not only do we have the three different communities, but the two, com two communities share a large courtyard. Um, this courtyard's fenced in. Um, and then they're able to go outside and enjoy some fresh air, weather permitting, of course. And then in the um, third community, there is also a courtyard. It's a little bit smaller and it's designed a little di bit differently, um, just with bumpers on the end of the sidewalk, so that way, because we have a lot more um, individuals in wheelchairs and walkers, so it keeps them safe. 
while they're outside. And the goal obviously is to keep them within your facility is until they pass, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way, but the goal is still to have that happen. Yes, and that's when um, a lot of third-party services like hospice comes in and pr um, provides that quality pal palliative care um, for our residents depending upon what they're willing to do. And where are you located? Um, we are located at 310 Cameo Drive in Hagerstown, Maryland. Kathy always thanks for taking time to appear on the program. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. The Community Foundation, through its scholarship programs and through its strategic grants, has been a positive influence for change. Last year, change in Frederick County was influenced thanks to nearly 1,800 caring donors. Everyone can help. Your influence is key. Help us proactively focus on where we need to be investing our energy in the future. Albright, Crumbacker, Mal, and Itell are a full-service firm that provides elder care services, including managing incoming bills, bill payment, depositing checks, balancing bank statements, and preparing, planning, and filing personal tax returns. Put your mind at ease and call us today. Welcome to the Making Sense feature on Contemporary Retirement. Making Sense focuses on the financial issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Christian Wright, President of Wright Gardner Insurance. Welcome to the show, Christian. Thank you, Michael. You know, Christian, we're going to finally use television the way it's intended to be. Is we have some pictures here as opposed to us yammering about auto policy. So we're going to have Director Greg pull up some slides and we're going to talk a little bit about it. So one of the myths here that we want to address is somebody hits me, they will pay my, to repair my car and my medical expenses. Yes, that, uh, that is not true. Uh, these are myths, uh, Michael, that we put together that um, absolutely not. They're supposed to. Supposed to. But the reality is they may not have insurance or their insurance may be inadequate. And so in order to, you need to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what we talk about a lot. Um, by the way, if you do have an uninsured loss, if someone hits you and they're not insured, that claim doesn't go against your premium calculation. For most carriers. For most <laughs> carriers. Yes, so what's this one here? If I cause a crash, my insurance company will cancel me immediately. Uh, we hear that a lot, um, and that simply is not true. Insurance companies do not cancel you uh, for having an accident. They can cancel you for other reasons. You don't pay your premium and, and other, other things. Well, and also, you know, if you have a pattern of accidents, well, that might be a different issue. But for most people, if it's yeah. in the normal course, you're not going to have much problem with right, it. Right, right. All right, how about this one? If my friend borrows my car, their insurance will pay for the damage. Um, we, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of misunderstanding about that. Um, if you um, give your car, give someone permission to use your vehicle, your insurance is going to pay. It's primary. It's primary. Now the only exception to it not being primary is if it's stolen and then there is no insurance on it. But occasionally for our viewers, if you have better coverage than the car you borrowed, your policy might overlay the other one, but it's primary right. first. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so what do we have here? Okay, comprehensive auto insurance covers everything and anything. Um, again, um, great title, but not true. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, insurance policies are written by attorneys, so you know, it's all in the words. Sold smithing. by MBAs. There you go, baby. Uh, so, comprehensive, unfortunately, is not necessarily comprehensive and all encompassing. And it, it also is, varies mm -hmm. from carrier to carrier what comprehensive right. means. It, it does. It does. It does. The 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 on the other slide, the the to think about it. You have collision insurance on your vehicle, and then you have comprehensive. Collision is you colliding with a vehicle, with, a, with an object. Uh, comprehensive is anything outside of that, basically. All right, so I get those out-of-state tickets. It didn't used to affect my ratings much, but you guys are catching up with that. Uh, yes. Te <laughs> technology uh, now, uh, absolutely. You, you, you just simply cannot hide. So uh, you get that speeding ticket in North Carolina. Um, and you get some points, it is going to transfer. You guys would probably find out faster than the insurance commissioner, right? Pretty much, And then yeah. the motor vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not certain exactly how long it takes to get uh, to, uh, or actually to the MVA, but um, they're pretty quick about it. How about my red car? I always pay more for that, right? Yeah, I, I heard this from someone. Uh, red cars, you pay more, and that, that simply isn't true. Uh, insurance premiums are based on um, uh, you know, the, the, the type of vehicle, really the horsepower of the vehicle, the value of the vehicle for the physical damage. You know, red cars, they may cost more if it's a Ferrari, but that just, uh, they're going to cost just the same as a white Ferrari. So co the color does not matter. 
But what will matter in terms of cost is your driving history, you know, your pattern Absolutely. of uh, tickets, previous accidents, and so forth. So, yeah. in fact, uh, you, you know, those are going to be the primary drivers. Yes, yes. Um, your, your, your motor vehicle record is one of the first things that, that the insurance underwriters will pull when they look at auto insurance. Um, and then they also look at your claims history. There is a reporting uh, database, which so you can't hide as well if you have an accident. Um, so those factors are really what determine the premium. But the list of myths, and, and I know, you know in future shows we'll, we'll go over other myths, uh, those are things that I thought was, were very interesting because, unfortunately, people have a misinterpretation or misunderstanding of something, and it may prevent them from actually having the right insurance protection. And we see that all the time. And, of course, one of the things we caution people about is because the insurance company is going to look at your history, there's no reason to have a low collision deductible because they're going to end up looking at those claims. And chances are you'd be better off private paying a lot of those claims, so save the premium. Yes, exactly, exactly. And, you know, the other thing, Michael, about that is, is um, the, 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 the deductible, if you can afford a higher deductible, always go with that. You know, and it may not necessarily save you a lot of premium, but it's going to save you the heartache as well in those reported claims. And I oftentimes say it removes the temptation to turn in that cheapy claim, which That's is right. going to affect your driving history exactly with the insurance right. company. There you go. And so you really, and we like to reallocate those dollars to greater liability mm -hmm. coverages, greater uninsured motorist coverage, and the fact is the vast majority of our viewers are more likely to be the victim of an expensive accident than the cause of an expensive accident. Exactly, exactly. And that, you know, that goes back to another slide, that uninsured motorist. I, we can't, I can't emphasize that enough, that it is so important that your viewers look at their uninsured motorist coverage. Uh, and if they can have an umbrella, we talked about that, provide additional protection there, uh, they're going to have the, the coverage that they need. Christian, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on the program. Thank you, Michael. Thank you from Contemporary Retirement. Remember a more carefree time? Leave your insurance worries to us, Wright Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. These days it seems like everything's online and filling out claim forms and receiving and paying bills online isn't always easiest. That's why we at Quality First Insurance encourage you to just give us a call. Let us help. Hi there. I'm Paul Sweeney with Quality First Insurance and it's still just this simple. Our offices are open every weekday where you'll be able to call and speak to real live people. No detail was missed. I'm so glad that I turned to Quality First Insurance. I've recommended Quality First Insurance to my friends who've been just as satisfied. If you're not happy with what you're paying for Medigap, or more importantly, not happy with your service, give us a try. We're locally owned, and we take the time to provide you with the best. We are Quality First Insurance, and our mission is to provide quality products to quality people. Pick up the phone and give us a call today at 800-745-1411.